One of the reasons why Skyhoy controllers are truly flexible is not only because we can install device cores to talk to a lot of different hardware, we can also label buttons dynamically. All the OLED displays on a life like, like this one makes it so flexible. Actually, the only thing we kind of locked down was fade to black, shift, auto and cut, and you know why? Those are almost always found on a switcher surface. So in a sense, this one is designed for video switching, live production, vision mixing, whatever you call it. But it's really agnostic toward which system you have behind. Is it an ATEM switcher? Is it vMix? Is it TriCaster? Is it something entirely different? That is um, no problem to change between because we have the OLEDs to show you what the buttons do. So. Um, in this video, we're going to put that icing on the cake, because in this case, those labels are pulled out of the system. You see how the ATEM device core is really uh, well designed to show you all the right stuff. We can change the labels of the cameras on the fly, so we just go here and then uh, change the label for camera 1 to um, uh, ceiling, for instance, and then we press save and it's instantly updated on the panel and that's just super great and everything. But uh, there are certain cases where we want to do or we need to do this manually. So for instance, one of them is, and let me just name the three that we're going to look at here. I want the button we assign to select the ME row to say something different than memory A put the value 1 inside. And that value 1 is really misleading in a way because it's really ME row 2 we are selecting by the value 1. It's a technical concern that means that value 1 means ME row 2 while value 0 means ME row 1. So um, it's not at all user friendly having this label on that button. The other thing I thought is, uh, what if I have a label on a key that I cannot change, like uh, media player 1. Maybe I wanted to, to say something different. So we're going to look at that. And then finally, we have uh, macros. Let me see if we go to macros here. We can see labels for the macros, but maybe I wanted graphics instead. So we're going to look at how we can put graphics onto the controller. So that's three ways of working with labels. So the very first thing I need to think about here is the fact that this controller has been modified in the local web interface all along. We looked at that previously. If you go all the way back to the first episode or the second episode, Basics 2, um, I think we talked about how we can synchronize configuration back to the, um, the server online. Or maybe it was in a later episode. But anyway, we need to do that because we have done a lot of changes and the way you get labels into the controller, in particular graphics, is you need to do it online so it gets compiled into the firmware of the controller. That's like a concern about memory and so on uh, that m is the reason why we need to handle it this way. So basically, before we do anything, because now we need to go online and work online, we go to the local web interface, press sync to core server, and then we are going to update our configuration online. So it's done now. That's what I just did. And I'm going to pull up the Skyhoy firmware application here. So with this one, I'm now accessing the online configuration. We can just quickly check if everything was saved as we wanted it to. And um, one way to, to check that, because the latest things we did was really setting the ME um, row to memory A. So yeah, obviously it's set. Let's see the IP address is right. Yeah, that's all good. Great. So how do we put labels into the controller? Easy. You go to the Manage Media tab, and uh, when you're there, you just add a string. There's a special formatting to this string. This is all um, written right there. So uh, it says that the first, this, the first thing I put in will be the, the title, then the second thing will be the first line, and the third thing is the second line, in case you have second lines. That's the case for the macro um, labels here. For my label over here, I would like... Um, I would like to put in ME select in the title and then I would like to, it to say ME2. So this is what I'm going to do, like that, save settings. So this is now a string that has been added, it's string number one, and uh, I could add more strings. So uh, I, I was telling you that I wanted to change the media player string here, so maybe I want this to say... Uh, media instead of just mp and i am saving settings so now i have string number two it's called media 
So two strings are now in the firmware. I need to go and update my controller. So I'll check for firmwares and I'll have to wait for the firmware to be generated and downloaded to the controller. So um, you could go and grab coffee in, in this waiting time. Okay, so the controller is now booting. The firmware is updated. It's gonna connect to the switcher in just a sec and we can access the local web interface once again. So let's go to that one. I thought that it would pop up here. It does. Yeah, it just needed to boot really. So, um, and one of the reasons why it actually popped up was because if you remember back that we added the web config action to the controller uh, element so that it gets enabled by default. Otherwise we would have to click the um, local configuration button in the firmware updater. Now, uh, I want to assign this label to the button U1. So that's where I'm going now. You see that it turns out the memory action already has a selector where you can select labels. You can, if you go to the very bottom, you can select images. So it has, uh, you can choose between 10 images, obviously. So that's the first 10 images you upload. And then it has a whole lot of labels. You will need to know the number of the label. Label one is the first one we selected. We uploaded um, in the media management. So that's the one we are going to select. And now that I am saving this, you see that I am getting a label. It says ME select, ME2, and then there's a one in the end. I'm sorry, I need to admit that I don't know why it has a one in the end, and that's probably a bug. But uh, so let's report that, let's report that. But overall, you'll understand that it did exactly what I wanted it to do, inserting a custom label. So when I'm toggling this function on and off, we don't need to, uh, uh, it will be clear to the operator what it's, it's doing. So selecting a label for the media player one uh, button is, is more complex because the thing is, this button doesn't have any way we can select the label. So we need to, um, I mean, we simply decided that this action would only rarely need a label. So therefore, we wanted you to do it um, more manually in a sense. While selecting memory values very often needs a label, sometimes you just want to change the title and sometimes you need to change also the value itself so it reflects more cleverly what it is you're doing. Now, uh, if I'm adding here, uh, but I can still add labels anywhere, so that's, the, that's a good thing. And I'm now adding a local label to this button. So again, I have an index, and in this case I'm choosing two, because label number two was the one I wanted to insert. Uh, I have a few parameters here, and uh, first of all, the most important thing is that I get it assigned to um, this part of the action. So if you remember how we built this, we have two shift levels for this knob, and uh, when I hold down shift, it's get blanks out. This is what happens after this divider called shift, so it has no action, but everything before that is what we see right now. So as I'm now saving, we'll see that this label is changing. It says media on the top line. Oh no, I forgot that the first string I put in is actually only the title and not um, the, the, the larger label below, which would be what I really wanted to have. Um, but before we go back and correct that, uh, I want to show you that we can um, set a few things, like uh, is status. If I save that, you'll see that the, the title is changing into a bar. And that's because the way we generally use, and you should probably know that, uh, it's not really apparent, but there is a convention here. If there is a solid bar behind the title, it means that we are showing the status of something. Like, look at those values. It's really showing the status of the media player one. Why is this not changing? Oh, I know, it's because there are no medias in that particular item switcher. We had medias over here, but not in this case. But it means that it's always showing you what is in the current media player. Currently, it's empty. Now, these, uh, instead, they do not have a solid bar. They show... The, uh, the value you are going to get. So for instance, when I, I, I press this one, it's, it says step because this is what the transition type you get. This one says wipe because that's the transition type you're going to get. But if we change these to become encoders that would change between these actions, I mean, we could just do it for, uh, let's take this one as an example and uh, go to the transition style. Then uh, now you have seen me do magic with the transition of force HVC type. So if I change this into a pulse component, so basically forcing this four-way button to be pulsed, then uh, saving, uh, and maybe, yeah, uh, like that. Save, 
then you'll see that this is changing. So now as I'm pressing the sides, I am cycling through different options and it will by the solid bar, it is communicating to you that what you see right there is the current value of ME1 transition and not the value you get when you press the button. That's what you have over here and you can see how that's following along. But this is, in other words, yeah, it's showing you. I'm just saying the same things over again now. We need to look at the label on um, that one. Actually, I want to clean this up if you don't mind. So uh, let me just delete this action and uh, I think that's all I need to do. So it's now going to fall back. Yes, thank you. Okay, let's go to the media player button. Now, uh, is status is one thing, so it definitely should not be status. And clear is another thing where you can see uh, adding only the um, the label for the for the header means that the label for the value remains. But if I choose clear, I'm gonna wipe that value out. So now it just says media in the header. All I need to do now to make sure that this performs correctly would be to go to my online configuration and in the media management I need to make the vertical pipe and then probably I should do like this I should say um, ME1 actually I'm I'm a little curious what happens if I put nothing maybe maybe that's what I want to do so uh, I put in media here media and I'm going to save these settings. So what I need to do now is to generate a new firmware, but keep in mind that we have done local settings. So we are actually quite interested in uh, checking that we can, um, that in the local configuration, we synchronize back the settings we did for selecting up there, local configuration. Let's just go and synchronize again. Synchronize, update. It's good, okay. And uh, we already saved the strings. Let's see, the strings are there, that's that's super. And then I go to the firmware update, I'll check for updates. And it seems like almost we did. Uh, I want to open the local configuration and check. At least we had a change and it's now writing media the correct place. The only thing I was curious about is if we can somehow maintain the title line as well. So I need access to, um, let me show you how web config can be man uh, handled. Uh, so web config stopping. Okay, so yeah, it is the right IP address. What's going on then? Okay, so it was just lazy. Let's go down here and then see that it's actually clearing. So that's exactly where we came from. We cleared all values and I'm going to bring that back because now what I hope is to bring back the title really. And now I got the title back because I'm now only overriding the value itself. Final thing we want to do is to apply labels in terms of graphics to the macro selection. So when we are here in the macro state, we want to see some labels. And it's always fun to, to, to pick graphics for this. So um, to inspire those of our users sitting in Asia, why not uh, bring up some um, Japanese kanji? I'm sorry about this misspelling. So guys, um, after a little bit of searching, I finally found something that we can use for this test from Shutterstock. I have no clue what this means, what it tells us or whatever, but I am now simply going to make some screenshots from uh, this graphic that we can now upload. So. This one, uh, these two, thank you, um, and these down here. Maybe go back and pick something else with, with a different type of complexity. This is um, definitely also something I have no clue what means. See, I'm trying to hit a 64 by 32 ratio, if possible, um, because that's what the graphics natively are like that. So now we have like five samples. We are going to upload this to our online uh, uh, interface. So let's just shut this down, go online again. Uh, remember that, um, again, if you made any local changes, you need to sync this back to the server because we are now going to the Manage Media tab. We are adding images down here and we will pick them from the desktop. So uh, let me see. Um, that's got to be something modified today, right there. Okay, so I'm now just selecting images. You see they are uploaded and converted even to 
black and white in the right size. And let's see what happens if we upload an image of something entirely different, which is a color image. It's not going to be pretty, so you usually need to prepare a little bit. This is an image of me. And, uh, <laughs> okay, so now we have Casper. Hello! So we save these settings. Um, okay, they are already saved. We need to um, move the new firmware over, so we do the check for updates. And again, we are going to wait for a few minutes for the firmware to be upgraded. And we are done, now waiting for the controller to boot. As soon as it has booted, we will be accessing the web interface. I'm just following on the serial monitor here to make sure when I know when, when it's ready. And there we go, connecting to the ATEM switcher, it's all good. Is it also the web interface is enabled? Let's check. So, unscrolling. Web server is ready for configuration. Ah, yeah. So, it's all good. We'll go to the web interface because what we want to do now is to assign uh, labels to uh, the buttons here. So, let's go to the macro state. And for these buttons, I will select the buttons. I do not care about the audio, so I'll remove that. I only see macro now. And again, like we just saw before, there's no uh, inherent label selection for the macro action. So again, we need to add one. In this case, we are going to add local graphic. And local graphic has an index to a number. So basically doing that, now I'm, I'm torn between adding an action and doing this or just inserting and changing the number here. I tend often to do the insert because it seems like it's the quicker way to make sure that you get all parameters set right when you have a copy-paste scenario like this. Sorry. It's going to be five, five, and finally six for macro number six. There we go. Save and behold. Voila. There you got graphics on your controller by means of inserting a system action for adding a local graphic to basically any key on a Skyhawk controller.